How would you like to win hundreds or even thousands of pounds by betting on a football match even before the match has started and regardless of who goes on to win? Click on this ebook. No, actually, don't do that. Just watch the rest of this video and I'll tell you how to do it for free. If you're interested in learning to trade on Betfair, then visit the Bet Angel Academy, where you have detailed, structured Betfair trading courses. Or why not visit our website where you can download a free trial of Bet Angel Professional, but also visit the forum where you can get detailed images, examples, and downloadable files. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell icon if you want notification of new videos as they're released. So I have uh, covered the strategy that I'm about to use. It's a Betfair trading strategy. It's not a traditional type of betting um, to allow you to profit before a ball has been kicked and a football match, regardless of who goes on to win that actual match. It's very simple because what we're basically doing is trading team news. And I've got some lovely examples for you here uh, from matches that had taken place relatively recently. And I just wanted to talk you through those examples um, so that you can understand exactly what your objective is um, how you would go about it. And each of these examples is slightly different. So it gives you a sort of uh, a mixture of stuff that goes on so that you can sort of see what your objective is and how um, I would have approached the market. The time of year uh, has an impact on this particular strategy because in the domestic football season in the UK, we have this crazy period um, towards the end, uh, it's sort of, I suppose, really in reality, it starts around mid-December because teams that are playing in the European Champions League will play matches um, early December. And then as we head in towards the Christmas period, we get a very congested period of football matches where teams may be playing quite a large number of matches quite frequently. Now, the problem you've got with that is teams get paid an awful lot to compete in the Premier League. So, even if you've just qualified to play in the Premier League and have been promoted from a lower division, you're probably going to get about £130 million worth of revenue. The top teams obviously get more because they get more TV coverage and prize money and stuff like that, but it's worth a huge amount of money. So generally what tends to happen around this time of year is when there's a large number of fixtures close together, uh, managers don't want all of their same players out all of the time. They try and rotate the squad. So if the fixture list offers that opportunity, or sometimes even if it doesn't, they will rotate the squad to avoid injuries. But even then, um, some, squad, some managers don't have the squad to be able to rotate much, so they put players out and players can get injured, and therefore it has an immediate impact on the fixture that's about to happen. If odds go up a long way in advance, um, then those odds are going to shift and change according to what team is likely to be put out and what injuries um, within the squad at that particular moment in time. So our journey starts really right at the beginning of December when um, Liverpool were announced as being, uh, they were going to be playing Everton in the FA Cup final. Uh, not FA Cup final, that's a bit early, <laughs> in the FA Cup third round. There we go. And um, when that was announced, the market was put up um, on the Betfair betting exchange. I had a quick look at the market and it was priced at 145. So Immediately, I just thought, well, this has to be worth a lay at 145. So when you're laying, you're betting against something happening. So laying Liverpool at 145, I thought was an opportunity. Had I gone mad, of course Liverpool are going to win against Everton at home, given how good their form is at this moment and how poor Everton's form is. But what I was saying here was it was a, a, a trading position for me. So basically, by laying Liverpool at 145, I'm saying that as we get nearer to that particular date, 145 to be Everton is probably sort of, you know, is the price that you'd expect probably even be a little bit shorter in terms of uh, the odds that were available. But I was basically saying that I thought a lot was going to change by the time we actually got to the match, which was going to be played um, at the beginning of January in, in a roughly about a month's time. So a bit of a longer term trade here, but there were opportunities to profit from this all the way through. So what we'll do is we'll park that for the moment. Um, and we will talk about other things that happened in between. So when we go into that busy Christmas period, um, you're talking about stuff that's just pretty chaotic, really. There's so many matches going on, um, so many fixtures. Uh, your squad is going to be stretched. It's going to be tough to really get things right at this particular moment in time. And you have to think about 
Do you field a full strength team against, you know, somebody that's at the bottom of the league? Or do you save a few players back so that they can play in a couple of days time um, in another important match? And um, the first example I'll give you is West Ham uh, playing Leicester. So when this market opened, uh, West Ham, uh, sorry, Leicester were odds of two to beat West Ham. West Ham weren't in a run of form. Leicester were playing very well. And they were at opposite ends of the Premier League table. Now, the interesting thing that happened here was uh, the manager of Leicester, Brendan Rogers, basically said, did I say Brenda then or Brendan? I think I said Brendan. Uh, I'll leave it in the video anyway. <laughs> but the manager of Leicester basically decided that um, he was going to rest some players. But he didn't initially say that. But his, his view was that he would be able to beat this West Ham team, even if they took out some of uh, the, the key players within the Leicester team. So um, when it actually came to the match itself, um, he did rest some players and in fact he rested nine. So that was a bit of a surprise to the market. Even I didn't figure out that he was going to rest nine of his players. You know, swapping out nine of 11 players is a very significant change from what you would expect to see. So as a consequence, um, the price absolutely rocketed out. At odds of two, if you do one divided by two, basically the market was saying that Leicester had a 50% chance of winning. Um, but because they'd removed or changed over nine of their players, basically the odds absolutely shot out to reflect what the new probability of winning would be. So if, in this particular occasion, the odds went out to roughly three, just short of three, 294. If my memory serves me correctly, I will bring up a graphic for you. Um, but basically the odds had shifted 50% um, uh, minus 33, 17% basically. Um, so the market was marking down Leicester's chance by about 70% given the wide number of team changes. So that was a very big, significant move that happened over a very short period of time. Everybody was expecting a few changes, just not nine players, and the market had to respond as a, 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 in, in consequence of that. So if you'd have laid Leicester at two um, with any, so let's say we laid Leicester at two with £100 and then backed them at three with £100, we're, we're doing things roughly here, and you would have made £100 profit. You would have you know, made back your entire stake on that particular trade. Um, so, you know, lots of potential there. But if we look again over this particular period of time, um, and Liverpool comes back into the mix here, Liverpool were playing Wolves. And the problem that Wolves had is that they had just played Manchester City, and they had won, actually. So they'd, they'd gifted Liverpool a further lead in the title championship, and then Lo and behold, they were actually playing Liverpool themselves away a few days later. But if you follow the press and you're into your football and, and you listen and read all of the stuff that comes up, you don't have to sit there every day going through every single article. Generally, you'll pick up on stuff as it happens. The Watford, uh, sorry, the Watford, the Wolves manager was basically saying how ridiculous the whole schedule was and that it was almost inevitable that he was going to have to rest some players uh, for the Liverpool match. So. With laser eye focus, I basically sat there um, with Bet Angel fired up and my finger over the lay button to see exactly what team Wolves would actually put out. And then basically, as soon as I got information on the team, which I would generally get from Twitter, but not always, but generally Twitter is the first place that you see it, um, then I just hit the lay button again. So Wolves put out a much weaker side than was expected and the price just popped out. So we've gone from this initial trade um, of Leicester um, playing West Ham and that, that huge move that we saw within the market there to a much, much shorter term trade here. I was basically waiting specifically for exactly what team would be put out. And when I knew that, I just went into the market, used a reasonable sum of money and basically um, went in and performed that trade. In fact, if memory serves me correctly, I backed Liverpool. I didn't lay Wolves, I backed Liverpool because I was expecting the price on Wolves to go out and therefore the price on Liverpool would come in. So it was just a, a quick opportunity to basically go into the market um, and grab a few ticks. So this trade was only, I think, perhaps about seven ticks. You can see that the move on the West Ham and Leicester match was absolutely massive. Um, but we're looking at fundamentally the same thing, but from a slightly different angle. You know, the bigger the change in team sheet, the bigger the move that you're going to get. And, you know, even small ones, though, can present opportunities, but you're going to have to use a bit more money. You'll see on this particular occasion, um, I used a fair amount of money, 
but this is somewhat deceptive because when you're actively trading, you may not use all of that money in one go. You may put one trade in and take it out and put another one in and take it out, or you may just put it all in one go. So you have to, when you see large amounts, um, in matched bets, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's just one trade. So always bear that in mind. Um, you can trade in a whole number of different ways. But fundamentally what we're doing here is backing Liverpool at a higher price, laying them at a lower price, and that would be a tough one. And Liverpool did go on to win that match, although rather controversially, a uh, VAR stepped in and basically disallowed a Wolves equaliser, which would have made quite a bit of difference. Well, a bit of difference to the championship race. So anyhow, two examples there, very long-term trade, a very short-term trade. And we return now to this Liverpool v Everton match, because as I mentioned at the start, um, we were looking at odds of about 145 when the team, uh, when the fixture was announced, and we were looking all the way back in early December. It wasn't a huge amount of money within the market then. But as the market sort of developed and matured, um, then other people began to cotton on to the fact that maybe we could be in a situation where, um, you know, the, the team was going to be a fair bit weaker than we would imagine. So we saw a little bit of a drift from 145 out to 170. And then when we actually get to the day of the match, the price had drifted a little bit further to 225. And the interesting thing about this is this was in, in, um, impacted by two team sheets. This, this is why I've illustrated this, because it's over a much, much longer time period but also the actual trade itself um, had some sort of variation within it uh, on the actual day itself. So typically you would wait until the team sheet is announced, which is about an hour beforehand. And then it's a case of who's the fastest on the button to be able to get the trade in. Sometimes, it, you know, if the team sheet is radically different, the market will take a little bit of time to discount the information. But if the team sheet is a little bit different, then you have to be quick and jump in there and take advantage of it at that particular moment in time. So um, yeah, on the day of the actual match itself, we got to 2.25. Um, and the interesting thing that happened in this particular market is that the under 23 team was playing on that particular day. And there were rumors swirling around that in fact, Liverpool weren't gonna put out their full team at all. They were just gonna stick out a bunch of youngsters. So the interesting thing about this particular trade is that on this day, when the under 23 team was known the market reacted to that because through a process of elimination, if they're not playing in the under 23 team, then they're probably going to be in the first team. So this was one of those rare situations where you actually get like double bubble. Um, we were able to get in at a low price very early on. Um, the price started to adjust to the realistic expectation of a, a team that was likely to put out. All of the news coming from the Liverpool camp was that they were going to rest a lot of players. Um, and then we have the under 23 team playing on the same day and therefore you sort of get a look in to what the team sheet could be because if they're not in the under 23 that they may have made it into the first team. It's very likely that they would have done so. So upon that news being announced, the price shot out and then eventually the full team sheet comes out. People can confirm what they know and the price peaked even more out towards four. So the remarkable thing about this trade, if we go all the way back to where we started, the market opened at 145. It was generally trading um, around that price for a period of time before gradually drifting out. But if you laid Liverpool at 150, it would go slightly above where the market opened, and then you traded out at four, you would have made about 1,600 pound, fully hedged across the entire market. So 1,000 pound would have turned into over 1,600 pound over the course of that entire trade. But the interesting thing is, whenever you look at this, and I'm, you know, I'm giving you the best case scenario here, if you spotted it early, get in early, and you had a thousand pounds to use, that would be your best return. However, um, all the way through this, you can see there were various points where there were opportunities to make money. And even when the team sheet was announced, the market just surged away. Um, and you could have probably even backed it for and waited for the market to settle back down because that looked a little bit over the top. If you were trading at live, you would have seen the market run away very quickly um, and there seemed to be a whiff of panic within the market and then it gradually settled down. So whichever way you traded it, there were just opportunities all over this market. Whether you get in at the beginning, on the under 23 news, on the drift that was occurring as people began to uh, realise what the situation was, um, or on the actual release of the team sheet, you could have done a lot of damage there. But these opportunities do come around quite frequently 
they tend to come around when there are a lot of injuries or when there's a, a, a fixture congestion of some sort, but also during cup competitions when teams are less likely to field their stronger side. There are opportunities plastered all over the market there. And the way that we exploit them is prior, ahead of any particular team news, we'll put a position in the market. Most of the examples I've given you here are laying it at a certain price and backing it back at a higher price. You can get Bet Angel to monitor the markets for you as well, and that will tell you if what type of activity is going on there. So, for example, um, when you look at some of these markets um, and the price starts to move, that will necessarily drag a lot of uh, money through the market. And Bet Angel can spot that, even if you're not looking at that particular market, and alert you that something interesting is going on. But um, fairly simple trades, um, fairly simple to understand how they were created, very simple to understand what you're looking for. Um, but ultimately very profitable. And there's no better feeling to have made a profit and hopefully a substantial one before the match has even kicked off. That's one of the absolute beauties um, of trading on Betfair. Uh, it's something that you can't do with a traditional bookmaker. Um, uh, you're just stuck with whatever price you get. But by using this particular method and keeping an eye on how the markets work, you're presented with some absolutely fantastic opportunities.